good day everyone today's topic is about a computable language and the functions that are used in turing machine so in the last lecture we have discussed about the turing thesis so anything which is mechanically computable any problem which is mechanically computable that can be solved using a turing machine also so the alonso church who gave in a different perspective but logically equivalent to the formulation that is if you are able to capture a computable problem then there will be a turing machine which computes it okay so this is known as a turing thesis or church turing thesis or otherwise we will be calling as a church thesis so we have seen uh, how to accept this uh, turing thesis so we will be considering that is we have seen it in the last lecture also so today i'll again explain that if there is a problem which is not computable or it cannot be computable at a finite number of states then there will be no turing machine to accept that problem so that means if you are able to solve a problem in the finite number of steps then you will be having a turing machine to compute that problem so these two statements uh, are the acceptance which makes the turing thesis accepted by the enormous of thing so let us see in simple example for example let us consider if you have a tape okay so you are going to design a machine which will compute some mathematical functions okay uh, where the mathematical function will be needed to be described and how do we interpret the arguments and how do we process it for example if the argument for the mathematical functions we will try to convert into with zeros and ones for example if i want to perform addition of two numbers the numbers are going to be not stored as a symbol because the symbol cannot be performed it has to be some numeric so what we do here is the three will be represented with a symbol one so how do we uh, represent it is it is up to our design we can design in any process here i am giving it as an example that three will be represented using ones how it will be represented is if you have three it will be represented with four ones so why do we am representing with four ones is for zero i will use single one for one i will use two ones for number two i will be using three ones symbol and similarly for three i will have four ones and for four you will have five ones so it goes on like this so if i want to perform an addition of numbers between three and four so the arguments will be represented on the tape will be of form with the representation of the symbol one each argument will be separated using zeros so this is one way of assumption how the arguments are to be accepted by the turing machine it's purely our ideology that we can do it in different way of forms so here i am giving an example so you can see in the tape this four ones represents the number 3 and this five ones consecutive ones will be representing the argument number 4 and you will be having the control start reading from the first one so let us see how the addition is going to be performed so when two arguments are done so when you add it it's going to be 3 plus 4 it is 7 that means the tape must be updated into eight ones so it should have eight ones so now you can see here uh 3 is having four ones and five, uh, four is having five ones when you just replace this as zero you will get the answer but you can see there is one more one is zero is there in between the two arguments so when you shift each cell one cell to the right side you will get the answer so you will have three ones followed by five ones so which will be eight ones which represents the number seven so this we will represent it as an addition so the turing machine t adds how we do is we will try to shift the leftmost numbers to the right so what happens it will move every number to the right so what happens it will the all the four ones will be moved one step then we will start erasing the number from the leftmost into zero so what is the first step we are doing here is assume the tape is having 1 1 1 1 
0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It is followed by zeros and 10. Now what happens is I will first shift it all the uh, things to one step right. So what happens now the table will be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now I will, the next step is we will start erasing the leftmost one to zero. So you will be erasing this one into zero and this one into zero. The remaining ones will represent the final answer. So this is how when you are trying to do uh, during design a Turing machine for any computable function, we have to assign how the arguments has to be represented initially and how the mechanism has to be carried out. So the commutation can be carried out with a transition diagram that will define it. The most important thing is how the arguments will be initially configured on the tape. So that we have to define it very clearly. Next thing is we have many types of problems. So suppose if you have a real numbers as an argument, then how the Turing machine will compute on the real numbers. So here you see when you are computation with the numbers like calculation or capturing or not on the non numerical values. So these commutable problems, the Turing machine will capture the general and effective procedures which determines whether any operation that can be performed on it or not. For example, if I want to check a particular argument is prime or not, then you will have a separate function or we will try to find the procedure how to identify the number is prime or not. So this is what we have to decide before designing a Turing machine. So that decide any given x whether or not x is the description of the Turing machine. So the x is the description in the sense the procedure how to process on the x. So for this we will not be using a single Turing machine, we will be using multiple Turing machine or recursively multiple things. So that will come to an, a new term called universal machine. So what is the terminology is? So you will be having a regular expression and above that you have a context free language. So you will be having a context free language. Then in this above this we had a recursively innumerable language okay so here i will take it as a decidable language and recursively innumerable language i have included a two more circles extra in this language so what is happening here is so these two which can be accepted or recognized by the turing machine <clears throat> so when you are doing this if you are given with a mathematical uh, function you may recursively use the same Turing machine with different types of arguments or you will be using uh, another Turing machines for executing this particular function. For example, you can have M1. It can be recursively executed with different types of set of values for one or one or two or three or the arguments, different set of arguments that will be done. So like a factorial, it will be working. So R1 needs the result of R2, R2 needs the result of R3. So when R3 gives the answer, that answer will be given to R2 with the same Turing machine. We'll be trying to find the solution. This is one case. And the another case is you might have M1 which gives M2 and that will finally give the uh, accepting stage. That is we are going to use two Turing machines together for executing. So this type of execution we refer it as a universal machine Turing universal Turing machine so uh, what is an universal Turing machine so how do we prove it so if a Turing machine is able to compute with any other machine then that type of model is called a universal Turing machine so it can be applied and anything and which can be computed and the computed answer will be considered as a universal machine process so this is what the Turing machine, universal machine is about. The next controversial problem is whether any problem that is not computable by universal machine will be considered as a uncomputable because as per the Turing thesis, if a problem is not solvable, then there is there exists no Turing machine. So here we are nothing we are doing. We are just going to combine two Turing machines together for solving a particular problem. So if you are not able to solve a problem 
then universal Turing machine will not be recognizing the language. So that is the rhetorical and theoretical power of a universal uh, Turing machine. So all possible process which can be carried out in a computing a number that will be recognized by a universal Turing machine. Same as a Turing thesis. Now how to construct a universal Turing machine? So there are two ways we can do. One, is, one approach is understand the program of any other machine and based on their understanding you can mimic the behavior of the second machine. So mimic the behavior in the sense the same argument. So if I have a two sets of argument for example now let me have a, an example like this a n b n c n and d n. So here this number of a's and number of b's and number of c's and number of d's has to be done. So this I can break it up into two things. I will take x n. Okay. So what is x n is going to be is it is going to be a Turing machine that will accept the number of a's and number of b's. And I will have another Turing machine which will count the c of n and d of n. Then finally these two results can be combined x n and y n. So you can design a single Turing machine m1 and I can give a n and b n to find what is x n. Then after that you can give for the same Turing machine I can give c n and d n. I will get the value for x n. Then x n and y n can be given to the same machine and I can find the answer for the original problem. So this is the first approach understanding the concept of the Turing machine and we will try to mimic or recursively reuse the Turing machine. Now the second step is you will try to develop a notational method and you will try to find what is the elementary function for that Turing machine is. So you will try to divide the problem into two set of phases and for one phase you will have a separate Turing machine and for another phase you will have a separate Turing machine. So if that is going to be the case let us see how a notation can be is defined. So the interchangeability of program and behavior using notation is now if you are using two functions, uh, two Turing machine, for example, I have Tn and I am giving the output of Tn to Tn dash. Now this output, how it is going to be given, whether it is going to be given as a just like printing on the table on the tape or you will be giving it as an initial configuration to the second Turing machine. So when you are giving it as an initial configuration to the second machine, then that description or configuration it should tell what it should do and what it is doing. So that two things has to be kept in the notational method. So one Turing machine when you are giving a quantiple to the second Turing machine then the second Turing machine should understand with what is the input it is getting. So it will understand what it has to do with that input and what is already has been done on that input. So this is the interchangeability program and behavior of the notation. So you no need to worry about too much about this. So what way you are giving, you are, are you giving it as, an, uh, as a transition function or are you giving it as a quantiple. So you can give it as a quantiples or you can give it as uh, a transition functions or you can give some production rules with the transition diagram. So in three ways you can submit it. Uh, to the second Turing machine. So second Turing machine you must design it accordingly to understand the quantiple or transition function for the universal Turing machine. The second interchangeability program is finding the set of functions that should be constructed on this sequence of the input given to it. So if a Turing machine is going to be constructed on a sequence the Turing computable problems must be considering these process. So first thing is you have to find the leftmost or rightmost occurrence of the sequence of the symbol. Then each you have to make the sequence of symbol by some other symbol which is not in the set of terminals. So you have to replace it with a set of terminals. For example if I want to count we have seen in the previous lecture 0 1 and 1 and so what we do is if you are having 0 0 1 1 so not to count this so we will be using another terminal symbols that is 0 will be replaced with x and 1 will be replaced with y. 
So finally, you will be replacing with a sequence of other symbols that is used for our Turing purpose. Then finally, comparing the two symbols, we will try to obtain, we will try to copy or erase or replace or you will try to compare. So you have totally nine Turing functions out there. So you can use any one of the functions to find whether the language is accepted by the Turing machine or not. So that type of uh, development or notational technique, we call it as a skeleton table. So the functions which serves that shorthand notation for the completing a Turing machine, it can be easily constructed more for a more complicated machines from previous one. So whatever what you have discussed here is the Turing machine. So we'll try to find a Turing machine which is can be solvable in a very easier manner and understandable manner. Let us see an example how it is done. So first let us take a very simple example. We are going to design a Turing machine to recognize the language. So what is the language here is L is going to be 1 to the power of n. So that is n is raised to the power of n where n should be even. So what will be the language that will be generated is it is double one, double one, double one or double one, triple one or it goes on like this okay so this is the language it has to be done so now what you have to do here is we are having only one uh, symbol here so we don't want to replace it with any other symbol and we can have a single turing machine to understand this so we don't want the full power of turing machine to be understood so what you are going to do here is we will accept the number of ones available on the tape when you require the uh, blank space then it should be in one. So let us assume for each one I will start from my initial state and I will jump over to the next state. For example, if you have four ones, so I will be in Q0. When it comes to the next one, I will go to Q1. So if you are in Q1 and if you are going to a blank space, then that N is going to be odd. You can understand that. Okay, so you will be having odd numbers of one. So from for the first one. I will be traveling so I will give it as a uh, transition diagram itself so it will be easier. So what I am going to do is 1, 1, 1, 1 okay. So for the first one from Q0 I will be going to Q1. So if if you are encountering a blank space then it is a rejected state because you have odd number of ones. So if you encounter the next one from Q1 I will again go to Q0. So if you are in a Q0 and if you are encountering a blank space, that means you are having two ones. So this is the simple concept we are going to do. So we'll draw a transition diagram so we'll be able to understand. So let Q0 be my initial step. Right. So only terminal symbol is one. So what we do is if you have one, you may replace it or you may not replace it. So I'm not going to replace anything. So when 1 is the input symbol, I will write 1 itself and I will move to the right direction to Q1. Okay. So only 1, 1 is encountered. Right. Now, if you have the second one, what I have to do is I have to go to the Q0. So again, if it is 1, 1, I will go to the right side. So now I am going to right side. Right. So this will accept all the ones. So there will be a, a swap between the Q0 and Q1. You will have multiple state uh, comparison. Now you see here, I will write the numbers. Now you will check whether what is the case for that. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So you will start with Q0. So Q0, what happens? If it is 1, 1 will be written and I will go to the next step. So you will have Q1, 1. If it is 1, Again, you will go to Q0. So you will have like this. So 1, 1. So uh, 1, 1, Q0, again 1, 1. So after again, when you encounter the third one, it will go to Q1. So you will have Q1, 1. When you encounter the last fourth one, it has to return back to the Q0. So when you enter, so when you have even numbers, you will stand in the Q0. When you have blank space with Q0, then you are having even numbers of 1. So I will give. If it is blank space or blank space R, comma R, then you can say my Q2 is accepted. So this is my accepting state. So let us check whether this works with uh, 
odd numbers or not so if it is odd number whether it is coming to q2 or not so let me have three ones so we'll start with q0 1 1 1 so what is q0 1 of 1 it has to go to q1 so 1 q1 1 1 now for q1 1 it will go to q0 so q0 1 what is q0 1 it will be going to q1 so 1 1 q1 it's a blank space so there is no transition for q1 with blank space that means it is rejected so this will be rejected right so we will write the turing machine function so the turing machine definition for the above thing is so we will design the turing machine definition we will define the duration so here the set of states are going to be q0 q1 and q2 so the terminal symbols you have used is only one and what is the tape symbols you have used you have used one and blank space and the transition function will write it at the last so your q0 will be q0 your blank space symbol is lambda small lambda and your final state is q2 so we will write the transition function so tau q0 for input 1 you will be going to q1 with 1 of right direction so tau q0 with the blank space i will be going to q2 blank space with right operation now q1 with the input 1 i will be going to q0 with 1 uh, quotation 1 so this is uh, the transition diagram is a transition function for the given turing machine m so you have designed a Turing machine for the given language. For the given language, L is equal to 1 power n, where n is even. Now let us see an example. So we will be trying to design a Turing machine for a computable function. So now here we are going to design a Turing machine just one sec design a Turing machine for the function f of x is equal to 0 where x is the input so the basic idea to design a Turing machine is that x is the input and if you have any value for x for example if x is equal to 5 how do we represent it in the tape so first we have to decide how our initial configuration will be on the tape for example if x is equal to 5 so how the tape will be represented with this information okay so as i said before you will be representing with uh, any one of these symbol i can use any symbol for example let me use it with a, a symbol 1 over here so i am going to use symbol 1 as a consecutive blocks to represent the number 5 so 1 will be used as a consecutive blocks to represent 5 so how do I represent for example if it is 1 I can take it as 1 if it is 2 I can take it as 2 ones if it is 3 I can take it as 3 ones so for 5 it will be 5 ones so in a previous example I told we can even use it with a, a number 1 if you are using 0 in your process so how do we represent 0 so if that is the case we will try to include uh, one more number for that so you will include one for single one will represent zero and double one will represent one and this is how it will be represented so in this example what you are trying to do here is we are trying to make any number into a blank symbol so you are going to make it as zero so here instead of zero i am going to use my blank symbol for representing zeros here so i will just use this format alone so in your tape it will be you can have a blank space followed by a blank space or anything like that so you will be having for phi how it will be is initially it can be of anything or it can be started from the leftmost itself so one 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 so i have five ones followed by my blank symbols now what i have to do here what is the function says about if you are given f of phi then it should be made zero that means my tape should be made blank okay so that is the step we have to do here 
So what is the simple step is replace all the symbols, uh, all the number one with blank space. So what happens? Each and every one will be made blank space and will be moving towards the right side until it encounters a blank space. So in this way, you will make it up. So we'll design a Turing machine for this. So first thing is I'll design a Turing machine. So we'll start with the initial state Q0. So when you encounter with the input symbol 1, I will make it as a blank symbol and I will go to all. So now I will go to Q1. Now in Q1, okay, so if it is, uh, why do I have to go to Q1? I can stay in the same step, right? Just one second. So all the ones should be made one. So I will have a self transition 1, which will be made as blank symbol and I will towards the right direction. So it will stay in the same state. Once it encounters a blank symbol, it will write a blank symbol and it will go to the right side and it will go for my accepting stage. So this is the very simple problem that will be converted. If you have other than one or if you have a blank space between uh, or zero or any other terminal, it will go for a rejection state. Only thing is the argument will be made zero. So if you give f of one or f of two or anything, it should be made zero. So what is happening here is in the tape, any argument is given that argument should be made none. So now the Turing machine definition is, so M is going to be, we'll write it in the steps itself. So set first one is going to be set of states. So which will be Q1, Q2. The terminal symbol we used only is one over here. And the tape symbol I have used is blank space. Okay, my initial and then you will have a transition function. My initial state is Q0, my blank symbol and my accepting state is Q1. So this is the Turing machine that is designed for the given function. So what is the transition function? So tau Q0 of 1 will be going to Q0 itself with the blank space and so if Q0 encounters with a blank space, it goes to Q1 with a blank space with right. So this is the Turing machine that is to process the function f of x is equal to 0. So let us see a next example, little bit more complicated. So now we are going to implement a, a Turing machine or we are going to design a Turing machine that will implement the function f of x is equal to plus 1. For example, so if the tape, uh, let us assume my x is going to be 3. So when I give f of 3, it should be equal to 3 plus 1 will be equal to 4. So how it will be in the tape? So in the tape initially, so the tape will be having ones. So how do we represent? I will take three ones here. So let me take three ones, one, 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 followed by blank spaces. So uh, we'll have a blank space as, as a symbol over here. So we'll have blank space. So when this input, if it is given to the Turing machine, it must give four. So that means what I have to do here, when you have consecutive ones, do not change anything. Only change the last, the leftmost blank symbol as one. So if you change the leftmost blank symbol as 1, what happens is, if you can see here, so 1, 1, 1, 1, then you will have a blank space. So this is the tape. So this, what happens, then your output, your argument, when you scan this symbol, so this argument will represent 3 plus 1, which is 4. Okay. So very simple, our algorithm is to, if you are encountering one, we will just move towards the right direction. If you encounter the leftmost, so I will take it as leftmost blank symbol, we will replace it with one. So then if you encounter the, after the replacement, if the next blank symbol is your, uh, next is a blank symbol, then we'll go for the accepting stage. So this is the step we are going to do here for this function. So f of x is equal to x plus 1. So your input 
will be one 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 with black with the lambda symbols in your output should be one 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 with two lambda it goes on okay so this is the input so let us design a transition function for this so let me start with the initial state q naught if it is going to be consecutive once let me stay in the same state so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to have a self transition so i don't want to change anything so let me have it as the uh, same one it remains no change so what happens if you have triple one uh, four ones or anything so i'm giving f of four then it should give f as phi as answer so you can see q naught one 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 then you will have one q naught one 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 then two one so q naught will travel towards the last end q naught one then again q naught goes to the last step with the blank space when it is in the blank space encounters the first leftmost blank space as i said this leftmost blank space must be converted into one so when it encounters the first blank space that will be written as one and it will move to the next state so you'll go to the next one so what happens this blank space so we have multiple blank spaces so this blank space will be converted into one so four one five one then q1 now if q1 is again encountering a blank space then i will go to q2 my accepting stage right so this is what they designed for the function transition function f of x so now what will be the turing machine definition so m is going to be what are the steps you have q0 q1 q2 and what is the symbol terminal symbols we have used here just one is used for my terminal symbol and what is the tape symbols you have used one and small lambda then you have a transition function your initial state is q0 your lambda is the blank symbol and your final state is q2 now what will be the transition function so q0 q0 of 1 for the input you will be staying in the same state with no change and you will be moving towards the right when q0 encounters the blank i will update it as 1 and i will go to next input and finally when q1 is encountering a blank symbol i have to go to the accepting state so q2 lambda of op so this is the turing machine that is designed for the function f of x is equal to x plus 1 so addition with the single argument is done so now let us take to the next level so in previous example we have seen the addition of uh, addition is performed with a single argument with a numerical value now here we are going to perform addition of two arguments so here i am going to perform addition of m plus n so first we will have to define the initial configuration so we will define an initial configuration for this okay let m be 2 and n will be 3 so what will be the initial initial configuration of the tape is so we'll draw a tape so we'll represent m so the value of the argument will be represented using ones so you will represent the value of the argument with a sequence of one symbol with the symbol one okay so i'll write it as sequence of symbol one and each argument will be separated will be separated using using symbol zero so you will use zero to separate the arguments so now how the initial configuration will be is so in the input tip so m is equal to 2 so you will have two ones followed by 0 then you have n is equal to 3 the second argument will be 3 1 so I will write it in a different color so you will understand that so 1 1 0 then 1 1 1 
then followed by you will have a blank spaces so you will have blank space so after performing addition how it has to be so we know that m is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 if you perform the addition it is going to be 5 so the tape should have the output tape it should be of form like this so it should be of the form with containing only five ones one two three four five followed by blank spaces so this is how it should be now we have to do the process so how to design the algorithm so now you have to design an algorithm so you have two arguments here and after performing it should be in this format now which should be considered which should not be considered so that you have to consider over here so the first step is um, from the initial state let us assume uh, q naught is my initial state we will just skip the we'll just skip one and we'll move towards right direction we'll move towards the right direction for example one one zero triple one so if you are q naught so first understand what I am, we are trying to do here so one one zero one 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 then you have a blank space now these blank spaces will leave so what i'm going to do here is this zero should be removed so what i do is i will travel towards the leftmost zero that is the divider or the separator uh, symbol between the two arguments i will replace it with one so what happens one one triple one is there okay so we will have it as a triple one so what i will do is i will travel towards the blank space to find the end of the ones then the final one should be made blank space so what i do is when i encounter blank space i will go back in the left direction for this one and i will make it as a blank after blank if it is again blank i will go for my accepting state so this is the logic we are going to do here in this addition of two numbers so let me write the algorithm first so first step starting from the initial state we will read zero and skip it up and we will be moving towards will uh, okay i'll write it in the cell okay so from the initial state read if you read one i will skip it up and remain in the same state so i'll remain in same state so skipping is nothing but no change i will do not do no change i will move towards the right direction so i will move to and i will perform right direction so what happens q naught will go from here to here until it encounters zero so now what i have to do in q0 so when q0 reads zero update by one so i'll update it with one okay and switch to q1 and now you will be switching to q1 and move in the right direction so move to right direction so this is one simple way of understanding i'm writing it here. now if q1 reads one what should be done just you skip remain in same state so remain in q1 itself and perform right direction movement so your tape head will move to the right direction now the fourth one is if q1 reads a blank space just skip okay so we can stay in the same state or you can go to the new state okay so go to q3 and perform a left movement you will perform a left movement so after moving performing the left movement now what does q3 has to do sorry q it is not q3 it is q2 okay so q2 right so the next step is when q2 reads one then it should replace with a blank space replace with a blank symbol and enters or enters into the final state q3 so enters into the final state q3. 
so this is the step so let me draw the diagram so you'll understand that okay so i will draw the diagram so initially you are going to have q naught so i'll have one one zero triple one this is the input on the tape so if it is one i will stay on the same state no change and i'll perform right direction so q naught one one zero triple one so you will have one q naught one zero triple one 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 q naught zero triple one now if it is we are going in this right direction so when this encounters zero it should be made one so zero means if the input is zero i have to update it as one and i move towards right and i will switch the state from q1 to q2 so now what happens one one triple one q1 you will have triple one so if it is multiple ones again you will have no change you will just travel towards the direction so you will have one 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 q1 double one then one 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 double one q1 one then finally i'll write it over here uh, this side i'll write it so it will be one 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 triple one six ones q1 with a blank space so when it is a blank space okay you will do no change and you will go to the left direction and you will switch the state to q2 so what happens now this will not be untouched so you will have one 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 you will be in q2 with a blank space when this now it starts moving towards the left direction over here when q2 encounters one update it with a blank space and move towards the right and switch to q3 that's it so it's your final state so what happens so finally you can see here the updation will be made in such a way so one 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 this will be made blank space and this will be q3 and blank space so now this is the final accepting state now let us design the turing machine for this uh, with the transition diagram so the transition turing machine is defined as let us define it as m so the set of states you have is q0 q1 q2 q3 the symbol we have used here is uh, 0 and 1 so 1 is used to represent the argument and 0 is used to represent the separator is used as a separator between the arguments the tape symbols you have used is 0 1 and lambda and you have a transition function your q naught will be initial state and small lambda is the function and your initial accepting state is q3 so now the transition function so if it is q naught for one there is no change you will remain in the same state with no optation only right movement if you are encountering with the zero then it will be going to q1 with an optation of one and right direction if q1 with this is with one it will be staying in the same state and it will be moving towards right if q1 is encountering with the blank space q1 is encountering with the blank space as an input it goes to q2 with the blank space and change its direction that is left direction okay so it will turn so it is left direction so when q2 encounters one it will just change q3 and make it as a blank symbol and move towards the right so this is the turing machine for the function f of x is, uh, sorry f of m comma n is equal to f of m comma n is equal to m plus n function so we have seen uh, functions how a computable function can be recognized by a turing machine we will discuss in the next session with a little more complicated problems and how to design a turing machine for that so we will meet with a new topic and examples in the next session thank you